Hello everyone, it's been a while and I know that. Um, I really don't want to always be in a position where I have to be saying sorry all of the time for being late in making these videos and dropping the videos, alright? And um, honestly, it is not intentional. And the truth is that I really missed you guys. I missed everyone. And I want you to pardon me for the delay and thank you for waiting. And I also want to use this opportunity to thank all of you for all the kind words, for your comments, your likes, your messages, inbox, and all of that. I really appreciate all of your kind gestures, right? Actually, I have been a little bit busy with the masterclass, talking about the Reservoir Simulation Masterclass. We just concluded a session yesterday, a session of the Reservoir Simulation Training, May 31st. So only now I have some time to quickly put up this video. Alright, I have also uh, received a couple of emails from some of my friends here asking about the June 1st edition of the Reservoir Simulation Training Masterclass. Um, actually, the date has been shifted from June 1st for some reasons. So it is going to be a weekend session. It's not going to be a weekday session anymore. So that means we're going to be starting the supposed June 1st session of the Masterclass by Friday, and that is the 5th of June. 2020 so if you are interested if you want to participate or if you want more information about this reservoir simulation training masterclass please send me a message on this email and i'll respond to you promptly well the masterclass has been awesome actually i've had so much fun with the new friends i made all around the world I mean, it turned out to be an interactive learning platform and what you're going to realize is that you get to virtually connect and meet with people of like minds, reservoir engineers from different parts of the world, sharing ideas and experiences, on the job experiences and all of that. So it has really been awesome. I had fun. And I also teach how to perform a detailed reservoir simulation study, making use of a real-life oil reservoir data set with very complex geology and engineering. I also teach how to make use of different industry standard tools to achieve practical engineering results. I think it's something you will love to experience. Alright, if you are going to be interested by any chance, just go on and send me an email and I'll give you more information. Alright guys. Now to today's business, welcome to the Reservoir Simulation Training Series on my YouTube channel and this is lesson number 6. In lessons 1 to 5, I have showed you how to put some information together to describe a hydrocarbon reservoir, right? So in the course of those lessons, we talked about the reservoir grid reservoir fluids, relative permeability and capillary pressure and all this kind of information, right? Now, putting all of these things together in a model, in a reservoir model, the intention is to use all the information to initialize the dynamic simulation model. Alright, first of all, let's talk about what initialization is briefly. Basically, the initialization process involves running the dynamic simulation model usually for the first time and the results obtained from the first simulation run will normally be used to verify that the reservoir simulation model accurately represents the structure and the properties that have been defined in the geologic model. Okay, this goes on to imply that the volume of hydrocarbon which is computed by this dynamic simulation model must agree with the volume 
that has been computed in the static model. To get a better understanding of this concept, let's quickly take a look at this equation, the volumetrics equation. OOIP is equal to area times thickness times porosity times saturation factor divided by formation volume factor of oil in this case. This equation is normally used to compute or estimate the volume of fluid, hydrocarbon fluid actually, which is initially found in the reservoir. Actually, the OOIP is one of the very important information that you're going to be looking for in the process of modeling the reservoir, whether you are a geologist or you are an engineer, right? So basically to use this equation to get an estimate of the initial volume of the hydrocarbon in place in the reservoir rock, you need to provide all of these variables that you have in the function. So beginning with area, the area information is normally gotten from the geologic map in the static model. Then the next variable, which is thickness, that is H, is computed from fluid contact depth. Then we have porosity from grid properties, also from the static model. Then we have formation volume factor represented by BO. And this one is gotten from your PVT analysis. Then finally, we have fluid saturation. In this case, initial water saturation. And this information may also be extracted from grid properties in the static model. So this makes some technical sense because when you have your water saturation, 1 minus your water saturation value is going to give you oil saturation. So in the past lessons, we have provided all of this information in the reservoir model that we are trying to build, except water saturation distribution. So in this lesson, I am going to import the initial water saturation distribution data into this Eclipse model. I have gone ahead before now to export this grid property talking about the initial water saturation from the static model. So if you look in the description section, you're going to find a link which you can use to download the SWAT init data. And then you're going to import it into your model as well. By the way, SWAT init is the Eclipse keyword that is used to define initial water saturation distribution data in the reservoir model. So I am sure you know how to import include files into your Eclipse project by now. So I am not going to show it. If you need more help, you can go back to the previous videos to learn how this operation is performed. But to import SWAT in it into your Eclipse project, you simply go to the SCAL section of your data file and import this data. It also an include file that I have provided. Once you finish importing this file into your project, then you simply go on and save your work. Then you can come here to file, write data so that your data file can be updated. Alright, that will be all in the next lesson, which is going to be lesson 7. I am going to teach you how to properly initialize the dynamic simulation model in Eclipse. Alright, till we meet again next time, you can use this link below to access my course on Udemy, Fundamentals of Reservoir Simulation with Petrel RE, where I share a lot of information with you as regards reservoir simulation. Actually, it is an applied reservoir engineering course and I am very certain that you are going to find this course interesting. Please go on to send me an email on this address 
if you need more information about the Udemy course and even if you want some discount on getting the course, just send me an email. And about the masterclass, registration is on for the next session of the webinar which is going to begin on Friday, 5th of June. You can use this link to download a detailed information about the program. And finally, I want to ask, do you need a Petra software for training purposes? Alright, you can send me an email if you wish to answer this question. I look forward to hearing from you.